as you dive deep, you realize some of the things that you've been holding on to, believing in, that wasn't yours. That's all you've seen around you, but that does not make it the truth and it does not make it the only option. You get to change anything at any point. And the hardest part is getting to a space of believing that you are worthy of that and believing that it is possible for you. The sooner that you align what you're asking for, what you're speaking into existence with your energy and with your frequency and what you actually believe, it is a spark that happens when you truly believe in what you are going after. Oh, you know, I gotta get comfy. <sighs> Hello, my loves. Welcome back to Tiffany TV for another episode of us getting our ish together and holding ourselves accountable and growing and showing up as the best versions of ourselves. So today, bevy of the day, I have one of my Bright Sellers wines. I featured Bright Sellers as a sponsor in one of my previous videos. And I am featuring a white blend, 2019 white blend. It is not too sweet, but it's definitely not dry. I think these wines are going to change my palate. It's going to make me grow up. It's going to make me grow up just a little bit. So my current season right now is trying to make sure that what I'm saying is what I'm truly feeling on the inside. Truly trying to master that. I think I might have done it a little bit backwards. And, and that's because I feel like all the manifestation teachers and self-help teachers are like, you know, speak what you want into existence and really, really big on affirmation videos. And while I feel that that helped because it set a tone, it kind of set... It's set part of the foundation of what I'm working towards, right? Like saying it all the time, seeing it written around me, journaling it has been really helpful. But for me, a super important part right now is really going inward. I have spent so much time, and I feel like a lot of us can do this, saying things out loud, but not honoring it on the inside or truly feeling that when I'm alone. And so it's one thing to always talk about positivity, right? And to talk about healing or, you know, giving people the benefit of the doubt and talking about abundance, being wealthy, being happy, you know, being happy in my career and joyful. But if that is not the energy that you actually feel on the inside, if you are saying that and every time you're saying that something inside doesn't believe it or you get like this feeling in the pit of your stomach, your stomach drops, that is the message that you are sending out to God, to the universe. If your words don't match what you truly believe and what you truly feel, then you are sending mixed messages. And so if you are not seeing any changes in your world, I suggest you examine. Every time that you say those things, what do you truly feel? And more importantly, this question from my deck came up and I was like, this hits the nail on the head. So I'm pulling the card today from my I'm Listening Self Love Edition deck. The link is below and I also have digital copies available. And the question is, how do I feel when I'm alone with myself? That's when I feel like you are the most vulnerable. And if you can check in with yourself and see how do you feel when you spend time alone? Are you joyful? Are you grateful? Or are you constantly going over all the things that can go wrong, has gone wrong, all the people that slighted you that day, you're replaying it, you're re-arguing with them, you're having future arguments. Like, how do you feel when you're alone with yourself? That is a true measurement of what's going on inside of you. I feel like for most of our lives, we put up a front. We know how to be in front of people and we know how to play the part. We know how to show up. Those of us who have experienced high levels of anxiety, we know how to put on so that people don't really know what's going on. I stopped and asked myself one day, I was like, what message am I energetically sending out to the universe and to God? What do I truly feel on the inside? And I asked myself that because I was like, there's things that keep happening, right? These spurts of goodness, but then it like stops. It never reaches its full potential. You know what I mean when you're trying to get something and you feel like you get a little bit in this a little bit and it's like a, a false start every time. I tend to experience that where I don't get to the full fullness of the dream or the vision and I realize like I'm saying all the things I'm speaking all the things to you guys I'm journaling it speaking it into existence when I talk to my partner and on the inside I am still affected and I'm still thinking about what I could have said and I'm 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 like trying to stop myself from being angry it's like an internal battle so as I told you this right here your gut which they say go with your gut listen to your gut 
You have energy centers in your body called chakras. If you know about them, you know this is your solar plexus. It's the center of your power. Right here is where I tend to feel my truth. When I check in right here is when I know whether I am truly believing what I'm saying. And if I check in, I know where my heart really stands. So a lot of this comes from the shadow work you need to do to understand what's going on on a deeper level. Digging down deep, figuring out what, where did it all begin? Where did the anxiety begin or the beliefs that you have, the things that are blocking you from experiencing joy or fully believing in the things that you want to achieve. Those things that are telling you you're not enough, you can't get that, you'll never have that. That feeling in the pit of your stomach that you get every time that you say you're a millionaire or you're wealthy, that feeling that you get that's like, no, you're not. A lot of it, most of it, 99.9% .9 of it starts in your childhood. Go back to your childhood. Look at how you viewed whatever you're trying to change, whether it is joy, being at peace, maybe it's living in peace and a quiet home. Did you grow up in a crazy environment? If you're trying to achieve wealth, did you grow up around poverty? What lessons were taught to you about poverty? What lessons were taught to you about peace? Did you receive messages of struggle? Getting down deep and asking yourself those questions. Now, I always say this too, therapy has helped me through a lot of this. Before I even knew what shadow work was, I had a therapist asking me questions that went to the depths of what was actually going on in me, the things that I didn't ask myself, where I was so focused on like, what has happened recently? What's happened in you know my relationships now? My therapist helped me to realize that things that happened in my childhood was the reasons I was accepting and going through things in my current relationships and friendships. It's mind blowing. But if you can, I always like to drop resources for therapy. If you can afford therapy, and if you're open to it, therapy has changed my life. If you feel you can dive into things yourself just to get an understanding, a lot of the questions that I put onto these cards are shadow work. It asks the questions that you usually do not ask yourself. And it's called I'm listening because it challenges you to actually listen to yourself and the answers that you are going to give to these questions that, again, we usually skip over asking ourselves because they're the hard questions. They're holding us accountable. They're asking about relationships in our lives, patterns and habits that we've repeated. When I'm feeling a little out of it, I love going to this deck and just pulling a card and answering what comes up because I learn new things about myself all the time. And so some steps you can take here. Let's list out the things that you feel are being blocked. List out the things that you maybe have been trying to go after for years, or maybe you're just starting and you just feel that feeling of this can never happen for me. Let's list out those things. Three top things, and I'm, I'm talking the things that you truly want to manifest. It might just be as simple as a peaceful life. Three things that you have been like, I just want to experience this. Is it abundance? And when I say abundance, I want to break abundance down because I feel like, again, we have another trendy word that can sound so far-fetched. Like, it doesn't sound like something attainable. I don't know. I, I think cause it, because it's so trendy. Like, abundance, abundance. When I think of abundance, this is exact. I have to break it down. This is exactly what I think of when I think of abundance. I literally want to pay for anything that I want, that I truly want, and getting clear on that too. Not just buying because I can, not buying things just to fill my closet, but things that I truly desire to have, whether it be trips, whether it be a piece, of, a piece of clothing that I see and I'm like, oh my God, I can see myself in that. I want that. I've been thinking about this same outfit for months or whatever. Maybe it's something for a friend. Maybe it's a gift. Maybe it's something I want to get for my husband or my child. Maybe it's a certain school I want to put him in. Anything that I desire, I can pay for that. I can pay for my needs, my responsibilities, so I can pay for my rent, I can pay my car note, my insurance, health insurance, I can pay those things. And after all those things are paid, I still have money sitting in my account enough to take care of if something pops up or just sitting there and growing because it can. That is what I see as abundance and that is what I've been speaking. So a way that I have been working on abundance in my life Three of our wonderful friends decided to have destination weddings this year. Three. Three very important people to us, so we are going to all of the weddings. Me and Kev have been putting off vacations for a while because we've been so focused on our dreams and our goals and the gaps in income and all those things. And we have not prioritized family vacations. We have not prioritized just getting away and truly taking breaks how we should. And God works how God works. And our friends planning these three destination weddings 
is forcing us to leave out of the country three times this year on vacation. At first I was just like, oh my goodness, how are we going to do this? Like, what are we gonna do? And we're also trying to buy a house and we have these goals and how are we? Then I also took it as a sign of when you tell God who you wanna be and you speak out loud who you wanna be, God is going to give you an opportunity to show up as that person, right? And so if I continue speaking that I am abundant, I can pay for what I want and what I need and have more than enough in my account. And that's what I've been speaking and speaking and speaking. If I keep saying that, and then God's like, well, here you go. You said you want a house, but you also have these three weddings that you want to go to, so how you gonna act? Somebody might take that and be like, girl, that don't have nothing to do with you. I take everything that happens in my life. If I'm invited to this wedding, it's a part of my life. I look at that as a sign to show up as who I say I'm gonna be. Now, at first, I wanted to panic. Right? At first, I was like, okay, we're gonna go. But inside, I was like, oh, girl, how? What you gonna? The vibe I was sending to God and what I was saying, I was saying, I'm gonna do it. We're gonna do it. We're gonna be there. But my internal signal, frequency, this is what frequency and vibes are. That feeling, that is what you're sending up and out. I was saying, I don't know how we're gonna do this. I can't afford that. I can't do that. I can't. And so, mixed signals. So, I decided to match it up. And I decided to stick with, we're going to each of these weddings and we're getting our house and we're doing anything else that we decide to do because that is what I'm set on. It's what I spoke and it's what's gonna happen. And we're gonna do it with ease. And when I sat with myself and how I felt around these trips, what I realized is one, I've never been on a trip where I have truly just paid for it ahead of time and not worried. Every trip was like right up to the deadline and then I'm buying the plane ticket and, and then I'm like, okay, we gotta have money to spend. And then, and it was always so, <sighs> and that's because that's what I've always seen in almost everyone around me, family, friends, like everybody always just, like they had the trip or the vacation coming up, but they always complained about it. And they complained about, you know, paying all the money you gotta pay to go and the money for the flights and the money you gotta pay to buy the stuff and then now we gotta spend money still when we get there and then we went on the vacation and now we're back and everybody's still complaining it's like so that's what i mean by shadow work sitting with myself and saying why do i feel this anxiety around trips because i've always heard like oh well if we're buying a house we can't also do this i heard that from everybody if you're buying a house this year don't do anything you can't do anything else and what i truly feel like and this is why it's important for you to examine your life and examine the tests. I don't think they're tests. I think God is just giving you an opportunity to prove that you are who you say you are or who you want to be. If you can sit back and examine that, which I'm sitting back and I'm examining, okay, this is all coming up at for us at once because these are three separate groups of friends. There's no one else going on all three of these trips. There's not even another person, I think, going on both these trips. So, <laughs> and I'm like, this is happening the year you know, that we are dead set on buying our house and moving. And at first I was like, you know, is God trying to say we're not supposed to move? And then I was like, no, no, I know for a fact that we're moving. And so now I have an opportunity to prove that I am who I say I am, which I live in luxury and I live in abundance and I know that I can do this and I will do it with ease. And I am going to pay these off ahead of time we're gonna get flights ahead of time. We're gonna have traveling money, no problem. And we're gonna come back and there's still gonna be money in our account. When you experience scarcity mindset, you live scarcity. When you feel like you have just enough to make it to the trip, you have just enough to make it to the trip. You know how many times I've experienced my loved ones always make it to whatever they wanna go to. Always make it to the wedding, to the trip, to the vacation, to the always make it but they always make it with stress and with complaining. And again, this is no attack on them, but it's observation for me. But I've always seen them make it. And I'm just like, could that have been achieved without the stress? That's the question that I ask myself only because I want to experience different. I want to have fun around trips. I want it to be a good experience and I don't want it to be a strain. I don't want it to feel negative. And again, this is my goal what I want to experience for myself and for my family and for Ev. And so I've been sitting with that. Can I speak it and be positive and sit back and, and say everything is working itself out. I have more than enough. Everything I need is rolling in. We are getting this house. We are going on these trips. 
can I do that and stay calm without panicking and like complaining and making it a negative thing? Can I do that? And we successfully had our first trip and there successfully wasn't any stress around it. Money was flowing still as we got back. And so I seen that first one come to fruition. And not only that, in between the destination weddings, <laughs> I have two other important trips for my closest cousin and one of my closest friends that I can't miss. So God put very important things on our calendar and I know it's for a reason. All of that long story just to say, the vibe that you are sending out and what you are saying, you need to find a way to make them match. And when you look inside and you can't understand why you're having this blockage and this struggle, shadow work and asking yourself deeper questions is what's gonna get you there. So your top three things. I'm sorry, I went on a total tangent, but I hope that that story was helpful to understand what I mean by, by, by going deep. Write your top three things that you are struggling with conceiving into reality. After you've written them down and you've gotten clear, let's go one by one down each of them and take your time. This may take you over time because you may go into one and you write three pages in your journal of things that you remember around that that maybe cause some negativity or some negative feelings around it. Now, if something too strong comes up, if a memory comes up that you feel like you can't work through on your own, please reach out to someone. Please reach out and talk to someone. I'm gonna put some resources below for therapy. I encourage you to look for therapists in your area. Kiss your frogs. Meet a few people. Ask to just talk to someone, have a consultation. Usually there's free consultations to see if you're a good match. Don't feel afraid to either talk to a therapist, talk to someone in your circle if you feel comfortable. If it's someone that maybe lived those memories with you, it, maybe it's talking to your parents or siblings um, or someone who was around during childhood that you can get more insight if you feel comfortable, of course. But if you are comfortable here just going through these things and you don't feel too overwhelmed with emotion, keep going. And so after step number two of writing out these negative feelings around it, number three is gonna be determining your new reality around that and realizing that what you experienced was other people's beliefs, was what you saw, that just because that's the only thing you may have experienced or the only thing you may have seen, it's not the only thing that exists. It's always harder when we don't experience what we're going for directly around us. When we experience it, it's easy to do. For example, for me, I've come across so many people like my husband who did not celebrate Christmas when he was a kid. And my family, on the other hand, I mean, the holidays were our time. We always were together. My mom decorated like every part of the house and it was warm and it was fun. And it still is my favorite time of the year because my mom created that for us. And so, Creating that now for me is not even a thought. I've seen it. I see exactly how it works. I know how it works. I know how it feels. And so I, I know how to recreate that in my home. But it was hard for my husband at first because he's just like, I don't get it. What's the big deal? It's not that big a deal. And so when you experience something right around you, it can feel like second nature. It's not even a thought. I often feel that way when you see children of wealthy people. They've never experienced anything different. So they know ways of making money and they know people and they know multiple people that are making money. So it's like, it's a norm for them. But when you've come from struggle or you've come from poverty or you've come from just making it, getting to that next level can be a mental hurdle. It is something that you have to rethink for yourself. And so as you are writing out your new normal, I want you to realize that there are more examples than you think. Whatever your things are that you are working on, whatever your top three things are, find people that have excelled in that. People that have excelled at living peacefully. People that have excelled at living wealthily. That have bought a home, having a healthy marriage. You know, whatever those top three things are that you are like, these are the things I want that I feel like I have a blockage. Research people that have already done that. If you can talk to someone, if you know someone that you can just reach out to, please do that. Please just talk to them and pick their brain and, and study them and, and ask them what made it work and how does it work and how did they do it and ask them ways that maybe you can achieve the thing. Don't be afraid to ask people that have already done it. If there's a blueprint, please Go follow the blueprint and tweak it to your liking and tweak it to you. But we don't have to reinvent the wheel. We don't have to do it all over ourselves. We don't have to figure it out ourselves. And just because it's not in our direct circle or just because we haven't witnessed it with our own eyes does not mean it does not exist. Watch autobiographies or documentaries. More importantly, look at people that have come from places like you have that have done it 
and take that into your subconscious, into your mind to know it has been done. Find people that look like you. Find people that have been through what you have been through and that have achieved that thing or that are successful at that thing. This is never an overnight thing. Give yourself time to get through it. Y'all know I love my 30 day mark. However long it takes you to get through it, take your time to get through it. It may take you longer than 30 days, whatever. And so as you research these people and you start to see that it is possible and it has happened, focus on your new reality and how you want to experience it. Now that we've gotten to the bottom of why we feel that way and we're reminding ourselves that just because it was like that for them and just because that's the only thing we have seen does not mean we cannot experience something different. Does not mean we can't create new memories and new feelings and thoughts around that. And now you have proof that it is possible. Watch that as many times as you need to. I can't tell you how many times I've watched Life is But a Dream by B. I love Beyonce because she's Beyonce, right? I love her because she's the entertainer she is, but I really gravitate towards B because she's an introvert and look at how powerful she is. So for me, that is seeing how you can be private and how you can keep what's sacred to you private and to yourself and for you and your family and your loved ones, but still be a powerhouse and still inspire and still live in your fullness and in your dream. When I was on this path of figuring out what I want to do, I knew I wanted to connect with people and to share things with people. I felt scared. I felt nervous. And again, being an introvert or identifying as an introvert my whole entire life and as shy, watching her and seeing her dynamic of how different she is when she's giving a speech or when people are complimenting her and how shy and giggly and like little girlish she becomes, but how powerful she is when she's doing what she loved inspired me so much to just keep going and keep going and keep mastering and keep working and working on myself. You need to do the same thing. You need to become a student of what you want to achieve. If you need to watch that one thing over and over, if you need to read that one thing over and over or keep having conversations with this person until you start to change what's going on inside. Now you can affirm and you can keep speaking and keep journaling and keep talking into existence what you want to see. But it is important that we go deep and we understand what is truly underneath all that trauma. What is truly underneath why we feel that we don't deserve and that we can't have. And lastly, let's act as if. As I'm trying to change what's going on inside of me, what helps most is to show up as her. And so when I'm speaking to someone, not only am I saying, oh yeah, I have three weddings to go to and we're buying our house. So yeah, we have a lot on our plate, which is true. That's true. But I'm making sure I'm not speaking anything else that I don't want to see come true. And I'm making sure that that feeling inside is matching what I'm saying. That I'm knowing that I am worthy of living this life that I want to live. That I know that it is possible. And I do that by continuing to keep my eye on the people that are doing the thing. Getting to the bottom of all of this, whatever we call it, your energy your vibe, your frequency, it's real. You can feel it when you walk into a room. It's the strongest way that we connect and communicate with the universe and with God. That's why when our words and our energy are out of are out of whack, we get these mixed signals. God don't really know where to go with it, okay? Because you're not ready. And so your homework is to do that shadow work in yourself. Understand why what you want, what you speak is feeling blocked. For a long time, I felt it here in my in my throat chakra. I felt this tightening feeling and almost like a pain because I wasn't doing this and I wasn't sitting here and just talking with you guys and I would speak what I want, but I would partially speak it. I wasn't speaking powerfully. I wasn't speaking the truth. I was kind of like dumbing down my dreams because I didn't fully believe them and I wasn't living them out. And while I was trying to say I was happy, I was not. I can feel it right now just thinking about that. And I have felt so much relief. And while I still know that I have things to work on, there's so much more that's more aligned. And every time that I tap into the world that I want to create and tap into how I actually want to move through this world, and I'm closing my eyes because that's how I access it, how I truly want to move through this world, eliminating fear and eliminating worry from decision making and from moving forward. And I get aligned with that and I check in and I know and I remind myself that if I have the vision, that if God gave me the vision, it is absolutely possible. And I just got to do the human work. It's not easy. It's still not easy. But I have to do the human work of getting that out. I have to undo what this human experience has piled on me. And it's cool because 
the deeper I go, the more that I have to share with you. The deeper I go, the more that I learn about myself and I learn about this journey, the more time that we get to spend together. And I hope that for you as well, that it, as you dive deep, you realize some of the things that you've been holding on to, believing in, speaking into your world that wasn't yours. And that the only reason you believe in it is because that's what your parents believe or what your family experienced or that's all you've seen around you. But that does not make it the truth and it does not make it the only option. You have options and you have choices. You get to change anything at any point. And the hardest part is getting to a space of believing that you can do that, believing that you are worthy of that, and believing that it is possible for you. The sooner that you align what you're asking for, what you're speaking into existence with your energy and with your frequency and what you actually believe, as soon as that signal that you're sending out matches your words, watch the magic happen, watch things start to fall into place and as soon as you believe it and you really believe it and you speak it you feel the power automatically it's it is a spark that happens when you truly believe in what you are going after this road will feel long if you are in constant war and battle with yourself and if you are going after something but you don't truly believe in it you are always going to stop yourself I've been there, I've done that. I've been the person with one foot in and one foot out. I'm going for it kinda, but like, I don't know. I don't jump all the way in. Believe what you're saying, believe what you're working for. Send that vibe out that you can have it, that you can have abundance, you can have peace, you can have your home, you can have healthy relationships. Speak it, believe it, and accept nothing less than that. And you don't stop until you get there, okay? I hope that these steps help. I hope they help you break it down and get to the nitty gritty of it all. As always, please ask questions in the comments. I will do my best to answer and to send over any references that I have. Everything will be linked below. The links to the cards, the links to therapists. There is one site that I'm going to link. They are Christian counseling services. That's actually where I found my therapist and I am not Christian and she respects that. And she asks me before she shares any scriptures and she respects my outlook on spirituality and I love that. If you are like me and you are more on a spiritual journey than a religious one, do not feel afraid to reach out to someone there and to express yourself and to let, let it be known that you are not religious but you are looking for counseling. And you know, I love my therapist. I love her, love her, love her. We have the same goal and it is to be great people and it is to be healthy people and to, you know, get over these hurdles that are stopping us from reaching our highest potential and being our best selves. If you love this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any new uploads. I really hope you enjoyed and until we meet again, my friends, keep living in love, in light, and in your truth. Nobody else's truth. Bye.